Go for we it. must return, brother. We must return to the gold standard, brother. This is fucking bullshit. Nobody's talking about this. Ron Paul had the right idea. And it seemingly has infinite money, but Second Thought believes it certainly does, and here's why. Let's take a look. Episode is brought to you by Ground News. We begin with the deal to raise the debt ceiling. The agreement raises the debt ceiling until 2025. It's not 100% what everybody wants, but when you look, the country is going to be stronger. This is going to be transformational. Congress just passed an agreement to increase the debt ceiling. If you didn't hear about it after the big panic. Congress has not prudently done its job. They're off the rails. Well, that's done now. Republicans and Democrats came to an agreement. They'll raise the debt ceiling for two more years and in exchange, work requirements for food stamps and welfare are gonna get worse. There's gonna be a $1.5 trillion spending cut over the next 10 years. Dude, Second Thought's getting even better somehow at editing, which is weird because like his editing was already so fucking good. Years, which will put a ton of strain on programs like affordable housing, new fossil fuel projects will have an easier time getting permits, meaning more pipelines, and you gotta love that. And of course, the student loan payment moratorium will be coming to an end. The government is just spending too much money and we need to tighten our belts and make compromises. Except for the military, because it's just cool as hell. You guys get it, it's so sick. Man, it's awesome with all the guns and the tanks and the domestic spying and the... We gotta give those guys more money. At least $886 billion next year. 3% more than in 2023, if I had to randomly pick a number. Do you maggots understand that? Nothing we can do about it. It's just the coolest thing we can spend money on. Anyway. This whole episode is about government spending, which is a very familiar theme in American politics. With the 2024 election season starting, like every cycle, one of the things you'll inevitably hear is the how are you going to pay for that question. Like with the debt ceiling stuff, this question will never come up for defense spending, obviously. Of that course. money is special and totally different and unrelated and stop worrying about it, we've got hospitals to bomb, come on now. But over the next 14 or so months, every single progressive candidate proposing universal health care will, without fail, get scrutinized for their budgeting. Despite the fact it's estimated that universal health care would save Americans $450 billion a year, and less importantly, tens of thousands of lives. But none of that matters. What matters is if it would create a budget deficit. More money going out than money coming in in taxes, and therefore more debt. And this sucks. This selective scrutiny for progressive spending, I mean. It creates doubt in a lot of people's minds about the viability of good projects like free health care. And this doubt rarely ever gets resolved by the truth. The truth being that the government can absolutely afford these programs. More than afford. The government has a long, long list of good reasons to spend money like this, and almost no reason not to, as you'll see throughout this video. These questions about government spending create a lot of doubt, though, and keep us from embracing progressive policies we believe in, including me, for a while. Social programs like free healthcare always sounded good to me, but they also sounded expensive. And for a long time, constantly being told that the government's spending so much already that the debt is in trillions of dollars made me believe we actively needed to give up on stuff like free healthcare and- Guys, I heard he's a hanky, this guy. That's what I heard. I don't even know what that word means, but I associate it with bad things now. And now I'm fearful of um, the propaganda that I'm watching. Of course, you know, <clears throat> surely some of the stuff that CNN gets is, is propaganda as well. But like, you know, I'm just scared. I'm just scared of what I am learning. Maybe um, if only there was like another content creator who has a different opinion than him could tell me that like this guy is bad or something. So I could also feel that way. Please tell me how to feel. And now instead of reexamining my worldview and maybe finding out that I do hold America to a different standard because I live here. I am going to continue just saying, what about China? China is fascist. You would defend China. Hassan, don't you always say, what about America? America is bad. That's another one of those uh, stupid fucking comments because yeah, dumbass, America is bad. <laughs> like the funniest part about the people who come in here and say, oh, Hassan, you don't have, your commentary lacks nuance. You only say America bad is that they love when I say America bad when it's something that is related to their own fucking stupid-ass self-interest, okay? 
these stupid fucking Amerabrain dipshits love when I shit on America and the hogs and all that other stuff when it's like, oh, I do want health care. I just also want America's like bloodthirsty endeavors to continue. You love when I say America bad. When it's stuff that bothers you. Because you at least have the, uh, you know, you're, you're better than the average hog. You're better than the average fucking dumbass Republican. You recognize uh, things and you, you operate on your own self-interest. But you can't, for some weird reason, see the world outside of American hegemony. Asana's character assassinating so many people right now. Who am I, who am I uh, assassinating? There are plenty of people out there don't want to see the world in a different direction, that fear multipolarity, that are incredibly critical of America's foreign adversaries who use every opportunity they can and spend most of their time shitting on America's foreign adversaries rather than criticizing them, as I do as well. But uh, moving on beyond that criticism and talking about some of the positives that they engage in as well, but for some reason, that nuance is always allowed for the United States of America, but never allowed for America's foreign adversaries. Oh, man, you must be talking about... It's like you're defending Nazi Germany. Just assume what that guy thought and didn't even say. What? No, I'm just talking about uh, criticisms that I see so regularly. It wasn't necessarily about that person. We've just completely moved beyond it. You need not to defend yourself, but you make a good, even better point about your topic. Then Chatter gets you to stop making a good point and it gets derailed. Yes, always. And then the goal is to scale back our spending. And in short, no, we don't. And in long, that's what the rest of the video is for. What I'd like to explain today is that government spending isn't a bad thing. There's no debt your kids will have to pay back, nor is it reckless spending by well-intentioned but ultimately kind of careless bureaucrats. We can afford to pay for social programs like universal healthcare, and welfare, and new infrastructure, and high-speed rail, and sustainable energy. Because government spending is A, not funded by taxes, so more government spending doesn't mean less money in your pocket, and B, there is no hard limit on government spending so long as the government spends money on something. The real constraint on government spending isn't money, that it has an unlimited supply. The constraint is physical resources. It isn't more responsible to spend less because all that spending less means is not taking advantage of the resources at our disposal. It wouldn't cause massive problems if we spent more, because for a country like the US, which has something called currency sovereignty, increasing the national debt isn't the same thing as when you and I go into debt. It isn't even really debt at all. Let me explain. We end up owning, owing countries money we take from our own civilians to make the money back. Wait, what? Brother, you know the the single largest debt that America has across the board is to, to America, right? Like the Chinese debt or the Japanese debt is just like marginal. Oh, fuck you, dude. God damn it. I thought this was going to be it. Another like 23 month subscriber who was going to come in and be so fucking pedantic and... And be like, ah, actually, those debts are not owned by individual civilians in the way that you're describing it. It's actually banks, blah, blah, blah. Like, I thought you were going to be like, God damn it. Take fucking five minutes off for the duration of this ad break, you fucking asshole. At the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. It's ten minutes early. I gave you, I gave you five minutes off so you know when to actually do the segue. Five minutes after you actually did the segue. Anyway, at the top of the hour, this is three minute ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for five dollars or for free. Thirty percent of U.S. debt is owned by foreign investors. Dynamic jab thirteen. Thank you for the five. Get the subs. Allowing five people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. Here's the three minute ad break now. The federal government of the U.S. has currency sovereignty. It has a fiat currency, meaning its currency isn't tied to anything like gold and it issues debt mainly in said currency. When the government- We must return, brother. We must return to the gold standard, brother. 
This is fucking bullshit. Nobody's talking about this. Ron Paul had the right idea. Government spends more than it taxes. This is called a deficit. This deficit is a gap the government fills at the moment through debt. And the US gets this debt by selling bonds. This is easily the most confusing part of the video, so bear with me for a second. What are bonds? Well, the private sector lends the US money. And in return, the US issues them an IOU, a bond that the government promises to pay back with interest at a later date, maybe 5, 10, 15 years later. The government doesn't really need this money. Remember, it can print more at any time because it has a fiat currency. So this is less of an actual loan and more of a savings account for the private sector. A risk-free asset that the government lets people, mostly the wealthy, store some of their money in. But anyway, these bonds are held by a lot of people, including some foreign governments. But the vast majority are held by Americans, the government itself, and the Federal Reserve, which will often buy back bonds as a way to introduce more currency into the economy. We call this debt. But it's more like an accounting system for the government and a way for it to give some value to its currency by making sure people want to store their wealth in dollars instead of something else. Unlike you and me, the government will always be able to pay this debt back to return the money on the IOUs it created because it's issued everything in dollars which the government can produce in unlimited supply. The government can never go bankrupt. It's not waiting for more gold to come in or something. The government debt is just a way the government monitors and holds onto a part of the money supply. If that was a little technical and complicated, here's a more practical way to think about it. Governments spend first and tax later. They create money and then they destroy some of it with taxes. You already knew that. We all know that governments create money. Without the government, there would be no dollars because somebody needs to print them out or credit bank accounts with digital dollars. And you and me, we're just not allowed to do that. But we often forget this fact when it comes to government spending. We know that governments are responsible for money creation, and yet most of our lives, we're told that the government gets a big pile of money through taxes and then spends some of it, and that's how federal budgeting works. <laughs> but that's not true. They spend first by creating money and spending it somewhere, and then they tax later according to how much they need to. Why are taxes part of this process? Well, the government has a rule. We all need to pay our taxes in dollars. No one's allowed to do it in Bitcoin or elegantly crafted poems, no matter how moving they may be. So people need dollars for their taxes, which the government gives them, sometimes by buying bonds or more directly by funding new projects. That money goes from one business to another and eventually ends up in your pocket as your paycheck, and that way you can pay your taxes. This process of creation and taxation allows the government to fund projects, generate demand and value for its currency, and ultimately control the money supply in its economy. Now that you understand that, things get a bit more complicated. In practice, the gov- I can't pay my taxes in NFTs, brother. That's why I put all my assets in NFTs. And now I can't pay no taxes because I got minus money. I don't know how the fuck I did that, but I got less money than I started off with. So now I don't need to pay taxes no more. What are they going to do? Put a lien on my ape? All my apes gone, brother. Government doesn't create all the money itself. It lets private banks do most of it, and it's mostly happy just kind of monitoring what's going on. When a private business gets loans from a bank, that bank isn't taking money from your savings and giving it to the business owner. It's creating new money out of thin air. And the government- <laughs> They put a lien on my ape! <laughs> no! The government Sorry. is cool with some private banks doing this so long as they follow a couple rules and the economy works the way the government wants it to. Money is created out of thin air all the time. Instead of letting private banks- Who is this sexy ass man that you need to follow? His name is Second Thought, and this is his latest video that is titled, Why the Government Has Infinite Money. Banks create new money. More government spending is just the federal government funding things itself instead of private businesses taking out loans. It's why when we say that the government could fund universal health care, infrastructure, the Green New Deal, whatever, it's true. The same way private banks could fund basically anything so long as the government doesn't call them a counterfeiter. There are no financial constraints when you can create and destroy money at will. So what's the limit? Well, the only real constraint you have to consider is what economists call the real economy. There's money, and then there's the real economy, the actual resources that this new money can be spent on. 
In the case of universal healthcare, for example, the government would be paying doctors and nurses salaries, the salaries of the workers who make medical equipment, pills and other pharmaceuticals, the hospital's electricity bills, and all the other things that keep medical centers running. The real constraints on what a government can do aren't coming from the budget. Remember, the budget is infinite. The constraints are the real-world resources at its disposal. When the government isn't spending on healthcare like this, either the private sector will and profiteer, or those resources will go unused. This is the reason government spending doesn't break everything. Because when new money is created, it's to do new stuff. The money supply grows, but so does the real economy, which government spending mobilizes. When the government funds a new endeavor, it's getting more use out of the resources available, and therefore having more money floating around isn't a problem. But I know you're thinking about inflation, because we're often told that inflation happens when the government spends too much, but that's not true either. Countries like Japan, for example, have some of the highest debt-to-GDP ratios in the world, and still the country can't get out of deflation. More government spending does not automatically lead to inflation or hyperinflation. Because of anime. All it really takes for inflation to happen is for enough businesses to start raising their prices. Your grocery store might raise their prices if they're a market leader, for example. Bro, Japan needs a little bit of Japan needs a little bit of that corporate greed. You know what I mean? A little bit of greedflation. Can change the money supply at all. Businesses that can't change their prices like this, either because they're in a more competitive market or can't move their prices. I don't give a shit about other people's dogs. Does that mean there's something wrong with my soul? Yes. Sorry. As fast, we'll simply lose profits and might even go under. We tend to think of inflation as everything getting more expensive, and having more money in the economy seems like it would cause that. But if everything did get more expensive at once, inflation wouldn't be a problem. If everything suddenly got more expensive, your salary- Before we popped out, I had a question. If wondered if fiat currencies are issued based on the confidence in the issuing nation towards other countries, doesn't mean that fiat currencies all depend on the value and reliability of the labor force. Um, I think it's more so in the case of the United States of America, valued on the dependency and reliability of the 800 military bases that America has worldwide. So it's more like, like it's not like every country on the planet is like, oh, I sure love the dollar, love being on SWIFT and having America control every aspect of commerce globally. That seems sick. Like I love doing banking uh, in Indonesia and like having... Uh, and, and having to, to work around the American currency. Um, it's more so, yeah, the, basically the credit rating of the government, but normally in a situation like that, your assets are important, right? Your assets are important. Your productive forces are important, like how your productive output is important. In the case of the United States of America, it's not necessarily just the amount of total assets that America owns, which is expansive and vast and awesome and crazy, but it also... Uh, revolves around uh, the, the military engine that backs the entire thing, the entire operation, the entire process. Salary would automatically go up too. It's because things move asymmetrically in the real world that inflation is so devastating, and all it takes is a few businesses leveraging their market position for it to happen. If anything, government spending on something like universal healthcare might even be deflationary. In all likelihood, it would lower the prices of health insurance and your prescriptions by Absolutely. cutting out the profits for the mi Hey, guess what, dude? I know that, like, uh, the American government doesn't want you to fucking talk about this, but healthcare is actually the most costly part of your fucking salaries going up. So even when your benefits package is actually going up, it's so uncontrollably expensive that you don't actually have any real dollars that go into your goddamn pockets. Yes, healthcare costs have fucking skyrocketed in this goddamn country, with no end in sight, Americans pay sometimes 10x more for healthcare to get way worse outcomes from their healthcare consistently. So remember that. But Will Pencil told me private insurance is good. Who the fuck is Will Pencil? That sounds like a fake ass name. International trade having to be traded in USD means other countries' central banks are forced to buy USD, which also deflates their own currencies. Will Penn's brother? What? Will Pencil Dick? And every other country needs to purchase dollars to buy things. Will Stencil. He's an annoying lib on Twitter. He's some Twitter guy. Love Twitter guys. Big fan. 
I think I know who you're talking about. Twitter pot save adjacent Will Stansel. I see different kinds of news in Turkish media that says one of the senators who's against Turkey is corrupted and now under investigation. Is that right? Wait, was Bob Menendez anti-Turkey? Wait, stop. Did he say something about the Armenian genocide or something? Is that why the Turkish government thinks he's anti-Turkey? I'm ratioing her. It'd be pretty funny if she actually uh, remembers who I am and like likes hate comments about me or some shit. Which, by the way, it's not even here. You know what I mean? Uh, I did look. I looked to see if that was real, what he said, which was not going to be real ever, but I had to check. And Chatter is lying. Celebrities like that never forget being ratioed. Why are you Ukraine takes so you cringe? <laughs> okay, I'll be honest with you. If all of my, like, uh, liberal naysayers were this funny, I, would, I wouldn't have an issue with the takes. Like, all the... See? Like, this part, this is, like, classic. Hassan, your crane takes a dog shit. Hassan is, in the, with a K, compromise. Hassan loves Putin. Compromat is a success on Hassan. That all this this other part is like silly, but this one at least is fire. You know what I mean? You hit me with a goofy ass, funny ass take. You know what I mean? Middlemen of the private insurance world. I'll say it again. Government spending has nothing to do with inflation. And in the real world, almost all cases of hyperinflation didn't happen because of more money printing, but as the result of productive capacity collapsing or an over-reliance on foreign currency, not government spending. Taken all together, this is why the government has this kind of liberty to spend. This framework of understanding money creation and destruction, generally referred to as modern monetary theory, or MMT, is why more spending, and even more debt, is fine. So long as the government finds something to spend money on, it can do it. It already does this anytime the Pentagon comes running for more money, or during the pandemic when the Fed injected $5 trillion into the economy. The problem with government spending is profit. In a capitalist economy, the prime directive that private business owners are operating under is- Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. He deserves all the money, though. Fuck, what did Guy Fieri do recently that made me feel bad about him? I forgot. Overwhelmingly positive across the board. Is profit making. The more the government finances directly, which it can do without worrying about profit and only focusing on the real-world outcomes, the less private businesses can extract profit from that thing. If the government spends on healthcare, a private business can't, and therefore won't, get the opportunity to skim a little off the top. Business owners also don't like getting taxed. This approach to government spending partly relies on the- one thing that is good to mention, though, this uh, is largely only holds true for countries that control their own currency and have their own debt in that currency, which sadly isn't the majority of the world's countries. Yes, like MMT can only work for America. It cannot work for Venezuela, for example. It cannot work for Turkey, for example. Just like quantitative easing can only work for America and not necessarily for uh, uh, Turkey in a similar vein, Right. You try to do quantitative easing in other countries and you arrive at uh, the, the hyperinflation that you see in the Turkish economy. MMT isn't real is it's a take that you're saying, but like we basically operate on the same boundaries of MMT, um, except in the direction of, of funding uh, the, the U.S. military or any kind of thing. The EU does quantitative easing. The EU is, a, is, is across the board another, like it's, it's in the periphery. It's allowed to. Another important point is public sector deficits or private sector surpluses. Simply government spending also relies on markets. So weird that chatters destroy you. Like how large is the group that's here because we already have our minds made up on all this. I can't imagine there's too many fence riders that watch. And if you turned out to be a dickhead, we would all leave. But still do what we are doing. The internet's big and you're not the only voice. Stay strong, brother the ability of governments to delete money. 
business owners who accumulate money by paying their workers less than what they bring in for the company would very much like to keep that stolen wealth and don't care at all about public projects that benefit everybody. So they lobby governments and pay accountants to find ways to not pay taxes and store their wealth somewhere else. Even when they are taxed, because these capitalists, these business owners are in charge of setting prices and wages, any taxation on businesses can often just be passed on to workers and consumers, through price hikes, wage cuts, extended hours, lower benefits, and on and on. And these here are the limits of MMT and the point where a little Marxism comes in. MMT accurately describes the power of the government to spend, but it doesn't take into account the power of the capitalist class to be upset about it. And in a class society like ours, that's a problem. The government can't go bankrupt. It can spend money on all sorts of cool stuff. But when it does, it has to get its permission slip signed by the ruling class first. If anything it does gets in the way of profit, the big chunk of money that only a few people get to keep, it will only do it if there's fire in the streets and it doesn't have a choice. The government can feed- Yeah, uh, specifically, COVID kind of showed this, and even then, the government did it. Did what it's supposed to do, which is still do a cash infusion to the businesses. Like it all, it almost feels like they're like, oh, if if the private citizens get like even a thousand dollars, then businesses have to get ten thousand dollars at least, or else we'll fucking explode. We'll die. Now, you might look at that in a charitable perspective and say, well, technically, the the uh, PPP loans were actually done for payroll and they were supposed to, they were, they were done with like honest intention or whatever the fuck. And the reality is that I personally believe that they just knew that that was not going to happen. Okay. I actually think the real problem with MMT is the simple messaging says you can spend without taxing, whereas the better message is tax the rich to pay for it. The EU never did quantitative easing, by the way. That's one of the big criticisms Yanis Varoufakis had about Eurozone monetary policy. That's why they let through all the big corporations getting them when there was supposed to be an employee number cap. It doesn't matter. The real reason why we had to do a PPP loan uh, structure, or at least like, a valid and charitable uh, assessment of why we had to do a PPP loan uh, structure was because we do not have a federal unemployment or federal banking system that we can easily fucking utilize or implement. Like that is that is part of the uh, that is part of the the issue is that like payroll is not streamlined in this country. Taxes are not even streamlined in this country, that which is by design, by the way. Um, and it was 100% legal to take a PPP and use it for whatever you want, just to use it like a loan, not a grant. It was designed that way. Yes, because the original uh, purpose of the PPP was it's a loan and not a grant, and it's only a loan if you use it for whatever purpose you want to use it for. But then they fucking turned it into a grant. And they never prosecuted or pursued many of the people who took the fucking loan that was a loan uh, that, that uh, they were supposed to use it on their own payroll. The issue is, the issue is, no matter what happens in America, our systems uh, that benefit the many rather than benefit the few are purposely crippled. Feed the homeless, free people of debt, fund renewable energy, reduce working hours by law without cutting pay. But these kinds of things suck for profit seekers. They're great for humanity, but they're terrible for capitalists. The small percentage of humanity that benefits when people are forced to work and buy at an inflated price. Universal healthcare is great. It might even save businesses money, but it makes workers less desperate. And that small percentage of business owners has the power and the wealth to stop the kind of spending that would make people less desperate. I'll summarize this video another way. Take away the need for profit. Take away the power of the ruling class. In short, take away capitalism. And the only limit to doing cool stuff becomes the resources available. 
We have the doctors for universal health care, the housing for free homes, the farms to feed everyone, the machines for infrastructure, the technology to switch away from fossil fuels. Another perfect example of, of capitalism being uh, a, a self-defeating uh, economic organization of society is the reality that we have the abundance of food and yet uh, we still have people that die to famine, right? And the global level, uh, we still have food insecurity in America even. Uh, and it's a simple, legit point. It's just a matter of like taking that food and giving it to people who are literally starving. And yet we fill landfills with that fucking food rather than giving it to people to eat both in our own borders and also overseas. 14 million people globally die due to famine-related diseases. And we already have an abundance. We have enough food to feed every single person. Think about that. Because the entire economy revolves around the profit motive. The idea is if uh, agricultural production is no longer profitable because now we're giving food away for fucking free due to need, uh, it will no longer be as expensive and it will no longer be profitable. And if something is not profitable, then no one will actually make it. Even if you took away the incredible amount of subsidies that is the driving force of the agricultural uh, production in this country, there would be no reason to make food anymore. Companies would no longer, companies would no longer engage in agricultural production because it's profit that is seen as the main motivator. We can spend on these resources and bring them into action. Let workers control the economy democratically and the new money we create can be spent well without the need to enrich. I love this guy. His name is Food Farmer. He said, I would still farm. I like to eat. Well, I think you would still farm because you like to farm. Your name is literally Food Farmer. I believe you. The middleman. We don't need to worry about how we're going to pay for that. I love that. There are plenty of resources in our economy waiting to be used for the betterment of people's lives. The only obstacle left is how much improving people's lives costs the capitalist ruling class. Okay, I understand that this is a horribly complicated topic that probably doesn't make much sense at first. In about 15 minutes, I've tried to explain something that is in complete contradiction with how most of us are told government spending works our entire lives. So I'm sure this short video will have left you with more questions than answers. To help, I've left a few videos and books in the description to help you learn more about this topic. Specifically, I want to highlight One Dime's two fantastic videos on taxation and government deficits. They were my introduction to this topic, and One Dime was kind enough to answer an unreasonable amount of my questions to make the video you just watched accurate. So please, show him some love. Damn. A plug this for a different content creator? In a fucking plug that I'm giving to this content creator, that's This is a really interesting and complex topic. And like funnily this. enough, government spending is one thing that both wings of the- I've never seen one dime before, and sec I, love, I love second thought. I'm legitimately curious now about this person, this one dime person. The changing ideology of Putin's Russia. When Russia wanted to join NATO, Putin became anti-West. Documentary. The nature of Putin's Russia and its causes. Leftist book recommendations. Space exploration and socialism. The origins of money. The problem with taxing the rich. The deficit myth. The biggest lie in politics. Acid communism. The culture industry. How capitalism ruined hip-hop. Practical guide to Canadian politics. Oh, God. Is he Canadian? Oh, no. The late capitalism of Jake Paul? That's funny. Borderlar, the Gulf War and simulations of war. He's pretty good. All right, I'm going to watch this shit. I'm going to fucking watch the shit out of this, dude. I'm going to hit that with a subscription. How about that? Canadian spotted, opinion discarded. Yeah. Oh, 
Oh, hello, my name is One Dime. Don't you know? American two-party corporate duopoly agree on. So I just want to take a second and show you what that looks like with today's sponsor, Ground News. I am genuinely surprised you've never seen or heard of One Dime. No, I haven't. Man, there's like definitely people in this uh, in this sphere that I am unfamiliar with. Here's Ground News' uh, second thought uh, link. One dime equals 10 cent equals Chinese propaganda. Oh, no. He's doing... He's doing Chinese propaganda, brother. That's an Eastern Canadian accent. You got a Western accent, too, if you want to shit on us. Snow Mexicans properly. Your take that food processor wouldn't exist is bad. Will the Turks stop producing baklava because there's no profit? It's a different end-use product from an agricultural good. What? Not everyone's going to be eating gruel, dude. Industries exist around food that generate a variety of end-use products, i.e. cakes, cookies, chips. These industries don't just pop out of nowhere, but certainly aren't tied to profit per se. There are cultural... Oh my God, you're not even joking. Okay, brother. Like, of course there are, uh, there are cultural aspects, or rather people don't specifically... Uh, gear their entire productive output around uh, profit-seeking endeavors. Like, I, I, I mean, look at the situation that I'm in, okay? When I started doing this, there was never a moment in my mind that I thought, oh, man, this surely will be a profoundly profitable endeavor. I never was like, I am going to talk about, like, dense-ass Marxist theory in the dumbest ways possible while simultaneously talking shit and, and one day I'll just be fucking super rich. Like, no, that's not why I started. And that's precisely the reason why I still fucking advocate for the same principles that I advocated for when I was broke. And also on top of that, still do it for eight fucking hours a day. Okay. Because profit is not my main motivator. You can say cap all you fucking want, but it is unimaginable to, uh, to, to speak about like incredibly successful leftist grifters in like, in 2016. Okay? It's so, it's such a funny thing. Like, we are, we are actually current daying motherfuckers left and right. Um, even though, if you open your eyes, you would realize that there are significantly more. Your takes are so zzzz, beef with some black women. That's when your streams are good. Littlest of bros. What? Ew. My man literally said the 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 fastest the grossest thing I've ever heard. That was a barb had to be. No, that's not a barb. No, that's uh that's 100% one of those fucking losers that's like uh like there's a lot of racists online that uh use AAVE now because I think they started ironically to be like haha look at how black people speak, right? And now, of course, stole a...